This video covers constraints and the flip side of the coin, which is degrees of freedom for a rigid body in space. Here we have a, the start of an assembly. We have this part and it's grounded. So let's see if we can see that. That part is grounded. That's what's meant by the symbol. So it has zero degrees of freedom right now. It can't translate, it can't rotate. We're going to add an identical part to that and it is called block. So I'll bring this in here. And right now this part has six degrees of freedom. It can move any way you want it to. So here's the, the drag tool and you can see it can just translate and then you can also click to rotate it about an edge, etc. So anyway, it can translate and rotate in all kinds of directions. Now, once we add a constraint to this, then it doesn't have as many degrees of freedom. That is, it can't move in as many different ways. One term that we use instead of constraint is often joint, so they're synonymous. If you think of a hinge on a door, your door would be able to have six degrees of freedom without those hinges, but once you put a hinge on it, then now it only has one degree of freedom. It can only rotate about the hinge. It can't move up and down. It can't spin sideways. Well, anyway, it can't spin about a horizontal axis. So let's add some constraints to this part. Here we're going to start with the connect. So this connects a key point to either a line, another point, or a plane. So I'm going to connect that point to this plane. All right, so now that constraint has been added. And I'll try to demonstrate the effect of that constraint. So it might not be clear. But anyway, that um, This back point here is on the plane of the block, and it's pretty hard to see that that's what's happening, but this point here is on that plane. So, well, maybe it's not that point. Let me, hmm, it seems it didn't work. Let me check to make sure that that constraint got added. Yes. Okay, well, so it's there, it's just hard to see. <laughs> okay, so anyway, this point is always on this plane. Let me try to move it again just to make it evident. Okay, so there, that point, no matter what the rest of the block does, that point is on the plane. Now let's add another constraint, which is the same. It, okay, so that connect, it took away one degree of freedom. Connecting this point to this plane, now this block has five degrees of freedom. It can rotate about any of the three principal directions. So it can rotate about Y, X, or Z, and it can translate in the X and Y direction. So those are five degrees of freedom. It just can't move in the Z direction. So this point cannot move in the Z direction. So that's what connecting the point to the plane did. It took away one degree of freedom. So now let's connect another point on this part to this plane and we would expect that it would then have four degrees of freedom. So I'll drag the component and see if we can see those four degrees of freedom in action. Now, it can still translate in the X and Y direction, and it can rotate about the Z axis, and it can rotate about that edge, this edge right here. So those are the four degrees of freedom. Rotation is about this edge, and then that edge can spin around on the plane and then these two points can move around on the plane. So it has four degrees of freedom. I'll add one more connect constraint here just to finish out this little illustration. And I'll connect this point to the plane. And every time we add one of these point to plane constraints, it's gonna take away one degree of freedom. So now it has three degrees of freedom. And basically this block is constrained to move in the plane. So it can only translate, those three points are constrained to lie on that plane. So that means that nothing on the block can move in the Z direction, kind of like, well, the whole block is now constrained to be in the plane and it can spin around the Z axis. Let's see if we can illustrate that. So the block can spin around the Z axis, but it can't rotate about any of the other axes. So it can just spin about that. Anyway two degrees of freedom of translation and one of rotation. And now I'll go ahead and delete those constraints and we'll talk about a couple more quick constraints. So just select that, delete it, 
Mm. Yeah, I'm hitting the delete key, but we can use right click also. All right, so now let me talk about the axial constraint in Solid Edge. And where is it? So, this one? Nope. Hmm. There we go. Axial align. So this is where you select two axes and they become aligned. So one axis lies on the other one. Um, so let me let me move this block a little bit just to get it out of the way. All right. So we're going to line up this um, stub with this hole. And we use axial align constraint. So now that axis is on this axis. And that took away four degrees of freedom. So that means that this part has two degrees of freedom left. It can translate along that axis and it can rotate about that axis. So those are the two degrees of freedom that remain to it. And this was called, if we were talking about joints, this would be a cylindrical joint where the part can it's like a pipe inside a pipe. So it can translate along the pipe and it can spin within the pipe. And two joints that are more common would be a revolute joint and a prismatic joint. And we can simulate those by adding two, well, two different constraints. So if we mate this plane to this plane, then the top block is only going to be able to spin about that axis. So there's no more translation available to it. So this would be what's called a revolute joint. There's one degree of freedom here. And like I said, you could also have a prismatic joint, which is relatively common. And that is just pure translation. So now we're back to having the cylindrical joint where the part can translate and rotate. And if we were to use the planar align relationship for this plane and this plane, so now those two planes are parallel and that means that the part cannot rotate about that axis anymore so it can only translate so that's a prismatic joint and th those two types of joints are common on manipulators so you could have a revolute joint which provides angular rotation well that's redundant it provides a rotation or a prismatic joint which provides translation <laughs>